The Heinemann Podcast is a production of Heinemann Publishing. Heinemann is a provider of resources written by real teachers for real classrooms. Heinemann values teachers as decision makers and students as curious learners. Discover the path to lifelong professional learning at Heinemann.com. Heinemann is dedicated to teachers. I'm Brett from Heinemann. How do you respond to a student's writing while conferring? And what's the best way to give feedback? This week on the Heinemann Podcast, we're talking about how to support your students during writing conferences. Writing conferences help students build confidence in their writing ability and find joy in the writing process. While conferring with students can feel daunting, author Carl Anderson says it's a skill any teacher can learn with time, practice, and the right resources. Nearly 20 years ago, Carl wrote How's It Going, one of the most influential books on conferring. In his newest book, A Teacher's Guide to Writing Conferences, Carl takes conferring and distills it down to an accessible, easy-to-implement resource for educators at any level. Our conversation begins with Carl's journey on conferring and since he wrote How's It Going. 20 years. <laughs> Wow. You know, um, my daughter was born around the same time that book came out. And um, people say to me sometimes when I say my daughter's in college, like, how's that possible? And how's it going? She's a baby. And so, yeah, she's 20. And the book is nearly that old, too. You know, let's just talk about what's happened in my life since that that book came out. You know, it became a very popular book very quickly. Mm -hmm. And my life changed in a lot of ways. First, I was asked uh, very quickly to do workshops all over the country and then across the world. So I have been in conversation with teachers all over the world about Mm -hmm. conferring and, you know, getting with teachers, talking about this material and hearing their questions about their experiences have helped me explain conferring better to teachers. I have probably visited a thousand schools since How's It Going came out. And one of the things that I do in schools, um, what schools ask me to do is do a lot of demonstration teaching. So one thing that's done for me is I'm much better at conferring than Mm. I was 20 years ago. (laughs) There are aspects of conferring that I have really had to think out in more depth since How's It Going came out. So I'm better at conferring. Mm -hmm. And because of the constant work in schools with teachers, I have found I have become much better at explaining what I do in conferences and just what to do in a conference. And the third thing, and really the most exciting thing that I've done a lot of in the last 20 years is uh, many schools have asked me to come in and coach teachers as they're conferring. And, uh, you know, it's been fascinating to just visit at this point, I'm going to guess probably over a thousand teachers' classrooms everywhere from Brooklyn to the Middle East. And and to get in there and to have a teacher say uh, very nervously, I'm going to do a conference. Can you watch? And what am I doing well? What can I get better at? And that coaching has really impacted how I talk about conferring because I've seen what are teachers strong at? What are the typical things that mm-hmm. they struggle with? And so I, I am much better at explaining, you know, conferring because of all these different experiences. And I think a teacher's guide to writing conferences reflects all of that work that I've been doing in the nearly 20 years since How's It Going came out. Well, let's talk about that because this is a different kind of book. Mm -hmm. It's a very exciting book, but it's different in many ways from How's It Going. Talk about how this book is different. Well, you know, maybe a little history on this book. I have wanted to do the second edition to How's It Going for many years. And I actually did write the second edition to How's It Going and finished the the draft uh, about a year and a half ago. And then Heinemann called and they said, we'd actually like you to repurpose the second edition into this new line of Heinemann books, Classroom Essentials. And one of the interesting aspects of that is my second edition was about 80,000 words long. And they said, well... It's going to need to be about 25,000 words. You're going to need to cut 55,000 words from the text. And, you know, it's been a fascinating process. Katie Wood Rabe, the editor of the Classroom Essentials book, has really helped me with this. But I have found that the process of writing this book in 25,000 words has, I think, made it much more clear, much more crisp, much more elegant. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it really helped me think about what's the essential stuff to say about conferring. So that's, that's a part of it. The book itself, I think, is a very different book for Heinemann. Mm -hmm. The design of this book is extraordinarily beautiful. It looks like contemporary nonfiction. 
The graphics are beautiful and they really enhance the meaning. And one of the features that I'm very, very excited about in this is that we hired an illustrator, my daughter Anzia, <laughs> my 20-year-old daughter Anzia, to illustrate the moves that, that happen in conferences. So throughout the book, there's these gorgeous cartoons, for lack of a better word, that really illustrate the different conferring mm-hmm. moves, and they are absolutely gorgeous. So the design of this book is just stellar and beautiful, and I think really enhances the meaning and the reading experience that readers are going to have. Another feature of this book that I think is really, really exciting. It is linked to over 25 videos Mm -hmm. with kids from every grade, from kindergarten through eighth grade. And so the reader of this book will be able to link to those videos throughout the reading experience and see me demonstrate all the things that I'm talking about in the book. I love the video. Uh, The process of doing these videos and meeting all these kids and doing conferences with them has been extraordinary. I've gotten to watch these videos a lot over the last couple months as we've been in the finishing stages of this book. And the kids are so smart and and so wonderful. And I think watching those videos for people who read the book and essentially view the book, I think that's going to be an essential experience. Because I do think that you know, you can read about conferring. It's important to read about conferring, but it's really essential to see conferences. Mm. I had that experience at Teachers College when I was new to writing workshop, probably around 1988. I came to a Teachers College uh, reunion Saturday and watched a staff developer do some conferences on stage. And it was transformative to me. I noticed all sorts of things that the staff developer was doing that I could immediately do in my conferences. So readers of the book will have access to these wonderful videos, as well as videos where I explain some of the things that I'm doing in each Mm -hmm. conference, which I think is a nice feature too. And, you know, I think, you know, the Classroom Essentials line of books, it's a new line for Heinemann. I'm honored that this book is the first book in this series. And I think the series is really trying to distill what's, uh, what are the most essential principles and content about teaching writing. And of course, conferring is at the heart of teaching writing. It's really what to me is the most important part of writing workshop and the most important skill for us to have as writing teachers. So conferring is a classroom essential. And I'm just proud that I get to write this book in this series. Well, let's actually, let's strip it down a little bit. What is a writing conference? A writing conference, you know, fundamentally a writing conference is a conversation between a teacher and a student about the student as a writer. Don Murray, the grandfather of all this wonderful work, he described conferring as writer-to-writer talk. And so how that translates in a classroom in a kindergarten or a fifth grade or an eighth grade is the teacher is the more experienced writer, the mentor writer, and the student is the apprentice writer that is the mentee writer who's learning from his or her teacher about writing. Teachers ask me all the time, this is the question I I get probably more than any question in my workshops and my work in schools is, fine, it's a conversation. What's the point of these conversations? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to understand that the point of a writing conference, this conversation, is to help kids become better writers. Mm -hmm. We don't go in to fix up their writing. We go in to teach them one thing about writing, a strategy, a craft technique, a convention of language that they can add to their repertoire. And through those conferences across time, as well as the many lessons Mm -hmm. and small groups that they're in, the kids develop that repertoire and become better writers. And I I think it's also important to think of these conversations, you know, just the subtext of these conversations. These conversations build relationships with Mm -hmm. kids. And we know from John Hattie's work, from Doug Kaufman's work, the importance of relationships in students' learning and achievement and their growth as writers. Writing conferences, it's a term we use to describe these conversations, but it fits in the broader category of differentiated instruction. It's a challenge for every teacher to go into a classroom in any school and be faced with 20, 25, Mm. 35 children who are very, very diverse as writers in so many different dimensions. And a writing conference is a conversation that allows us to differentiate instruction with children, to meet any kid's need in a classroom. You know, we start by saying, how's it going? And what that really is inviting a kid to do is to give us feedback Mm -hmm. about him or herself as a writer, which we then respond to with feedback and teaching that the kid can act on right away. Mm -hmm. So it is a conversation that has a lot going on in it. It's a complex academic conversation that happens in writing workshop that just moves kids as writers. It's a very, very powerful thing to be able to do with kids. You also write about that feedback is very important, not just for the feedback from the teacher to the student, but also feedback for the teacher from the student. Right. Well, we we tend to think of feedback in schools as what teachers say to kids. Mm -hmm. You know, traditionally as a kid, I got feedback through what teachers wrote in notes on my papers or grades that I got. But feedback, the more important kind of feedback is student to teacher feedback. And John Hattie writes about this in his work, the classrooms where there is student to teacher feedback. 
it correlates well with student achievement. So a writing conference invites feedback from children. I say, how's it going? Which you know, on the surface sounds like just kind of a friendly way of beginning. And mm-hmm. of course it is. But what I'm really doing is I'm inviting kids to give me feedback about how their writing is going, how their learning is going, you know, what's going well, what's a little bit hard for them as writers. And then, you know, in a conference, and this is one of the challenging parts of it, we need to distill the feedback we're getting, what a kid is telling us, what their writing is telling us about themselves as writers. And then we then turn around and give them feedback, you know, Mm. clear feedback, what's going well, what's your next step. And the teaching in a conference is a kind of feedback as well. And what's great about conference feedback that we give kids, unlike the feedback I got as a child, which didn't often make sense to me, and I didn't understand why they even wrote the comments sometimes. In a conference, I give feedback to a child. It's a conversation, so I get a feel really quickly, this kid's understanding me or not. Mm-hmm. I teach them. I get a good feel because we try out what I taught in a conference, uh, what we teach in a conference right there. And then afterwards, the child has an opportunity to try it right then. When I got papers as a child, I didn't write another one for a couple of weeks. So whatever feedback I got that I understood, I couldn't really do anything with. Mm-hmm. A conference, the kid does something with it after every conference. Carl, what is the best way to invite a student to talk more about their writing? Getting kids to talk about their writing, it's, it's something that I think is really, really important. And a big emphasis in the book, chapter two, is all about discovering what a kid is doing as a writer. Writer, and a big part of that as teachers are learning strategies for inviting student talk. Mm-hmm. And what's great about writing, there is discourse, a specialized language that writers use all over the world about writing that we invite kids to speak from the moment that they're into a writing workshop in kindergarten. There's a video with a little boy named Massimo and that's linked to the book. And it's, it's a gorgeous conference. I start by saying, how's it going? He says, good. I say, what's going well with your writing? I think I asked a question like that. And he said, he's teaching facts to his readers. Mm-hmm. And there he is. He's, he's learning how to speak as a writer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that open-ended question, like, how's it going in the wait time? We talked about wait time before, I think, is really critical. What's really interesting about conferences, though, is, is you know, as kids are learning to talk about their writing, they'll often talk very generally. I'll say, how's it going? And a kid will say, I'm revising. And that's great to know that's the part of the writing process where mm-hmm. the child is, but that's, that's too general to really help me know where to go in the conference. And so one of the really fundamental strategies, and this is something I think Dan Fagelson um, in his book, Reading Projects Reimagined, his wonderful book on conferring with readers, you know, he, he talks about nudging kids to say more about that. Mm-hmm. And so that is an important strategy. So when a kid says, I'm revising, and I will say, we'll say more about that. Often they say, well, I'm adding on to my draft. And I'll say, we'll say more about that. And the kid will say, I'm adding definitions to my nonfiction piece. And so we've gone from revision to a very precise kind of detail this mm-hmm. kid is working on. So I think that's one really critical move to this, this say more about that strategy. And then a chapter two of A Teacher's Guide to Writing Conferences includes a wealth of strategies for either extending student talk mm. or just scaffolding kids' talk. And I, I think it's a really, really fascinating thing to focus on with kids. You also stress the importance of active listening strategy. Yeah. You say it's very important. Why is that? Well, you know, active listening, it's not just about conferring with writers. It's just conversation in general. When we are best conversational selves with each other, going out with a friend for dinner, you're with your spouse, you're with your children, you're with colleagues, it's stuff that we all understand how to do when we're our best listening selves, mm-hmm. things like our body language and how that invites conversation with somebody else. That when someone says something to us, we often will say back just to check that we're understanding them correctly, that we're interpreting what they're saying in the way that they intended us to. So those are just some examples of acting listening strategies that just come from our lives that are important parts of conferences. And I think using the word conversation, going back to what we were talking about before, you know, what is a writing conference? I like the word conversation, you know, think about it synonymously with writing conferences because it puts people at ease. Mm -hmm. When I say that a writing conference is a conversation, the teachers I'm with, you can almost physically see them relax a little Mm -hmm. bit because it's like, oh, conversations, I know how to do those. And so I can take what I know about conversation in my life and I can put it into my writing conferences. But you also say that it's important that in those conversations, especially after the first question, to be quiet. Yes. Why? Well, you know, first off, the quiet, on the most basic level, when I say, how's it going? And then, as Don Graves used to say, mm-hmm. give the kids 10, 15 seconds of wait time. Um, it gives kids thinking time. When you're writing, you're in the world of what you're writing about, the story you're writing about, mm-hmm. the nonfiction topic you're writing about, the argument that you're making in your writing. And when someone just pops in and says, how's it going? 
it can be disconcerting. When a flight attendant asks me, how, you know, essentially, what are you doing, buddy, when I'm riding on a plane, <laughs> I must sound like an idiot because I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I need to think about that a little bit. So the wait time is partly just to give the kids a chance to think about what they're doing and to come up with an answer to the question. But the, the wait time also does something else. It shifts the focus of the conference onto the child. Mm -hmm. Conferring is not about us. It's about the child. And I want children to grow up to be writers with agency. So when I say, how's it going? And I give some wait time, I am shifting the responsibility onto the student and giving a clear message that you have a role to play in this conversation. I mean, that's something that kids learn over time. One of the exciting things in the videos, if a reader were to really go through the videos K through eight and to see the progression of how kids get better and better mm -hmm. at talking about their writing. Some of the upper elementary and middle school kids are phenomenal. There's some just amazing conversations that I, that I have with some of the kids. But that's because over time, kids that responsibility is shifted onto them and they learn what their role is in a conference. My wait time, the silence that, that I give is also a statement of faith. It's a way I communicate to a child, well, I believe you can do this, mm -hmm. you know? And so the wait time is, it's a simple strategy, but it's really powerful in, in how it shifts that responsibility and invites talk. And it's a hard thing for a lot of us because, yeah. uh, you know, I think some of the research on questions and response time in education is in, uh, some of the research shows less than a second of wait time. And then often teachers will answer the question themselves. And I can feel uncomfortable in the beginning when you say, how's it going? And it might feel like hours. It's really just 10 or 15 seconds. <laughs> um, and one of the funny things I sometimes say to teachers is, you know, we get paid for not saying anything sometimes. In a writing conference, that space is important for kids and for us um, in helping conference be successful. How do conferences get sidetracked? conferences getting sidetracked. <laughs> they can get sidetracked in a lot of ways. <laughs> Some kids, when you sit down with them and say, how's it going? They want to talk about the content of what they're writing about. And so I'll say, how's it going? And maybe you'll say, you know, I'm writing about going to the beach and it was really fun. I had a great time with my sister. And, you know, sometimes we get sucked into long conversations about what the kids are writing about, but those conversations don't really help kids become better writers. So we have to reboot those conferences and say, okay, that's fantastic. You're writing about searching for frogs in Cape Cod. What are you doing as a writer? And so sometimes the kids lead us astray, but sometimes we're our own worst enemies. Sometimes it's our own backgrounds as students of, of writing. We were all students of writing in elementary, middle, high school, even college. If we grew up, as most of us did, with teachers that just corrected our writing. Sometimes I think our natural instinct is just to sit with the kid and get a pencil or pen out and start correcting them. I've seen teachers do that with the pen, you know, with the best of intentions, but that's what they know. That's what they went through as a child. So they do that to a child. It's not effective to do that. And then sometimes I think another thing in the Sidetracks conference is that we have some bugaboo about writing that just really bugs us. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for us. We, we look at a student piece of writing and there's something our 10th grade English teacher says is not good writing. And we just go there and it's really not what's the most important thing for the child. So, you know, there are different things to sidetrack conferences. And I think to not get sidetracked, I think we have to trust kids that kids are going to learn to talk about what they're doing and that we're going to allow that to guide us as writing teachers and that we also have a clear sense of what we're trying to do. I'm going to a conference to figure out what a child is trying to do as a writer. I'm going to assess how well the kid is doing what they're doing and then I teach them to do that better. You have spent a career focusing on perfecting or really reworking and thinking about conferring, but you're very honest in the beginning of this book about your yeah. first conference. It was a disaster, you yeah. say. Yeah, it was an utter disaster. And you know, I'll circle back to this story in just a minute. But um, the educator, Deb Ball, who I've had the privilege of hearing her speak at conferences, you know, one of the things that she says, and I'm just going to paraphrase what she says, there's an exact quote from her in the book. But she says that good teachers aren't born good teachers. Good teachers learn to be good mm -hmm. teachers. And one of the reasons I tell the story of my disastrous first conference is because it can be intimidating for teachers to have someone who's been teaching writing for nearly 30 years mm -hmm. visit their school. I often work with teachers that have been either teaching for just a couple of years or teaching writing just for a couple of years. And, you know, when you have someone who comes in that's very good at it, it can feel like, oh, he was just born that way. 
or any of my colleagues at the Reading and Writing Project, for example, they are wonderful at conferring with children. And again, I think it can be sometimes threatening for people. It's like, how can I ever be that way? And so I tell the story of that first conference, which was an utter disaster, because I think it positions me with my audience. No one's got the gene for good conferring. There's no one that's predisposed to be good at conferring. And if you don't have that gene, you're not going to be good at this. You know, this is something you have to learn to do. And I think that's true for any practice in education, whether it's conferring, whether it's doing small group work, doing a mini lesson, doing guiding reading lessons, any of these kinds of methods that we use to teach children, nobody's just good at them. You have to work hard to get good at them. Teachers usually laugh when I tell the story. They think it's hysterical. And I had to tell it in a very, very funny way. It's always great to start a day with a funny story, too, and laugh a little bit. But I think it makes people feel like, oh, that's where he started, and he's gotten better at this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mine aren't going that well, but that gives me hope that I can get better. Is that sort of our key to demystifying workshop is to just keep at it, keep coming back to it? Because it can, as you said, it can be intimidating. I, I don't remember who said this, but anything that's worth doing well is worth doing badly at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a normal thing when you're starting something new, whether it's teaching writing workshop, whether it's learning a new dance, learning a song on a guitar, you're never going to be very good at it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. When I first started doing a writing workshop, there were just a couple books. There was Lucy Calkins, The Art of Teaching Writing. There was Nancy Atwell's In the Middle. There was Don Graves, Writing Teachers and Children at Work. There was a way that writing workshop, you know, you just kind of read a little bit and just started. And it was kind of a pioneer spirit about it. And now there's so much material, there's so much mm -hmm. gorgeous material. The units of study from Teachers College. I mean, my gosh, what I would have done to have those 25 <laughs> years ago as a scaffold for me as I started this. I think it's helpful to demystify the whole thing. I mean, first off, just a workshop is simply a room where people are doing work. Mm -hmm. And as they make their writing, we are going to give mini lessons to start the period. We're going to very importantly have writing conferences with them during the writing time where they're making those pieces, etc. But I do think, you know, to demystify it and also just to encourage people, there's a way that it's a very simple structure. There's a way that it can be very complex because there's a lot to know. But I think people need to give themselves permission to not be very good at it in the beginning. You know, and that's hard because a lot of teachers are perfectionists. They feel extraordinary responsibility to children, which obviously is important. I think is characteristic of most teachers that I work with. But you have to start somewhere and you're going to have some strengths. You're going to have some areas of teaching writing you need to get better at. But I think we have to give ourselves permission to do our best and to get better over time. How can this book help writing instruction for new teachers? Well, I, I think teachers need guidebooks to help them with mm -hmm. conferring to help them with writing workshop, to help them with guided reading. And, you know, I think bottom line, what this book will do for them is I think the writing is clear mm -hmm. and will give them a clear image of what a conference is about and what the different parts of a conference are and how to navigate those parts. Mm -hmm. And the video will give them, I hope, a very clear image of what conferences look like. They can watch over and over again to get a feel for how conferences go and can impact their practice. I've seen new teachers become better so much faster than I did because of the kinds of support that they have. Mm. Books like A Teacher's Guide to Writing Conferences, I hope, are one of those supports. Their coaches, staff developers, institutes they can go to, um, the books that are out there. But to me, a book like A Teacher's Guide to Writing Conferences, I think, will help people navigate this very challenging terrain of working with children one-on-one -on -one about their writing. My thanks to Carl for his time today. Carl's new book, A Teacher's Guide to Conferring, is part of a new series from Heinemann called Classroom Essentials. For more information on Carl's new book, the series, and a preview of the many videos Carl has produced to support the book, as well as a look inside the incredible design of A Teacher's Guide to Conferring, check out Heinemann.com. Be sure to also follow Carl on Twitter. He can be found at Conferring Carl. And for more information on the podcast, we invite you to check out blog.heinemann.com. Thanks for listening.